Hello, this is Super Left D or Games here, the Left Gay here, coming with Super Duo. And what you hey guys. guys. Happy Halloween. Yeah. This is our Halloween special. We're doing something different this time. We're not going to be doing any scary games or any gameplay this time. We're going to be do reading some three creepy pastas. Yeah. Creepy pasta. So today we're going to read a spooky story, Jeff the Killer. The, the most creepy popular pasta. creepy pasta. Yeah. He is the murderer and death. He kills people. Yeah. With a creepy face smile, which it just creeps me out. Give me some chills. Don't you? Yeah. The next creepy pasta we're gonna read is the Sim the Sims Creepy Mansion, yeah. the gaming creepy pasta. And um the strangest security tape I've ever seen. Yep. Yeah. And we're gonna read it. He's gonna be doing the Dialogue, I'll be doing the narrating. Yes. So, All right. let's get to it. Without further ado, let's get started. First up, Jeff the Killer. Yep, super. Nine <clears throat> of me. All right, here goes. <clears throat> Excerpt from a local newspaper. Ominous and unknown killer is still at large. After weeks of unexplained murders, the ominous and unknown killer is still on the rise. After little evidence has been found, a young boy states, states that, he, he, that he survived one of the killer's attacks and bravely tells his story. Alright. I had a bad dream, and I woke up in the middle of the night. Say, with the boy, I saw that for some reason the window was open. Even though I remember it being close before I went to bed, I got up and, sh and shut it once more. Afterward, I simply crawled under my cover and tried to get back to sleep. That's when I have a strange feeling like someone was watching me. I look up and nearly jump out of my bed. There, there in the little ray of light, illuminating from between my curtain, were a pair of two eyes. These weren't regular eyes, they were dark, enormous eye. They were boarded in black and just pl just plain and terrify me. That's when I saw his mouth, a long, boarded in smile that made every hair on my body stand up. The fingers stood up, stood up there, watching me, finally after what seems like forever. He said, a simple priest, but say in a way only a man could speak. Phrase. All right. Your turn. He go. He said, "Go to sleep." I let out a scream. That's what sent him at me. He pulled up a knife, aimed me at my heart. He jumped on my top of my head. I fought him back. I kick. I punch. I roll around, trying to knock him off of me. That's when my dad busted in. The man threw the knife. It went to my dad's shoulder. The man Ow. probably would finish him off. And once of the neighbor hadn't alarmed the police. Okay. Want me to do it? They drove into the parking lot and ran toward the door. The man turned and ran down the hallway. I heard a smash like glass breaking as it came out of my room. I saw the window that was pointing toward the back of my house was broken. I look out to see and vanish into the distance. I can tell you one thing, I will never forget that face. Those, those cold, evil eyes that they, Pisces the smile. <laughs> they will never leave my head forever. <laughs> okay, I'm right sure. Police are still on the lookout for this man. If you see, if you see anyone that fits the description in the story, please contact your old police department. That kind of worries me. <laughs> Jeff and his family have just moved into a new neighborhood. His dad had gotten a promotion at work, and they thought it would be best to live in one of those fancy neighborhoods. Jeff and his brother Liu couldn't complain, though. A new, better house. What was not to love as they were getting unpacked when the neighbors came by? Hello! said. She said, I love her. I live across the street from you. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself. And, and to introduce you, my, my son. She turns around and calls her son over. Billy! <laughs> He's out of the new neighbors. You're so funny, Super. 
Billy said I ran and ran back to play in his yard. Well, said Jeff Smart. Oh, Margaret, and this is my husband Peter and my two sons Jeff and Leo. <laughs> They introduce themselves and then Barbara invited them to their her son's birthday party. Jeff and his brother were about this object when their mother said that they were in love too. When Jeff and his family are done packing, Jeff went up to his mom. It's your turn. Alright. I think I just lost my page. Shit. <laughs> Is that uh, mom? Why would you? Alright, I just lost my face. I just ran. I just having a good time listening to your freaking hilarious voice. Alright, All right. my turn. Okay, mom, why would you invite us to some kid party? You haven't noticed I'm not some dumb kid, you little biatch. <laughs> just yeah. Just kidding, man. Just kidding. Yeah. Right, that is mother. Alright, it's my turn. Right. We just moved here. We should show that we want to spend time with our neighbors. Now we're going to the party and that's final. You don't have to make your voice that crazy. It's her voice. <laughs> Jeff started to talk but stopped himself, knowing that he couldn't do anything. Whenever his mom said, said something, it was final. He walked up to his room and plopped down on his bed. He sat there looking at the ceiling when suddenly he got a weird feeling. Not so much a pain, but a weird feeling. He dismissed it, it as just some random feeling. He heard his mother call from him down to get his stuff and he walked down to get it. <clears throat> the next day, Jeff walked downstairs to get breakfast and get ready for school. As he sat there eating his breakfast, he once again got that feeling. This time it was stronger. It gave him a, a slight tug of pain. Tugging, oh, sorry, tugging pain. But he once again missed it. As he and Liu finished breakfast, they walked down to the bus stop. They sat there and waited for the bus. And then, all of a sudden, some kid on a skateboard jumped over them, only inches above their laps. They both jumped back in surprise. Hey, what the hell? Oh, wait, that's you. <laughs> Alright. Hey, what the hell? The, the kid, kid let it and turned back to them. He kicked his skateboard up and caught him with his hand. The kid seems to be about 12, one year younger than Jeff. He would say, Oh, I'm lost to go shirt and rip blue jeans. <laughs> okay. Well, well, well. It looks like we got the meat. Suddenly, two other kids appeared. One of them was super skinny, and one of the other one was huge. Well, since you're new here, I'd like to introduce myself. Oh, my hair is he. Jeff and Liu looked over to the skinny kid. He had a dopey face that you would expect a sidekick to have. And he's dry. He's my, he's my bitch. They looked over at the fat kid. Talk about a tub of lard. The kid looked like he had an exercise since he was crawling. All right, it's your, it's your turn. Listen here, you little pup. Get back my That's the wrong one. That's Randy put the wallet into his pocket. You while. skipped a paragraph. <laughs> what the fuck? The one about it. And I say that the first kid and Randy now. Now for all the kid in the neighborhood, there is a small place for a spear. If you catch my drift, list it up, ready to punch the light out of the kid eyes. Which one is friend? Put a knife on him. Take, take, take. I hope you will be more cooperative, but see, we must do it the hard way. The kid walked with the Lewis and took his wallet out of his pocket. Jeff got his family again. Now it was truly a strong, burning sensation. You set up, Luke, get it, get it, just set up, Jeff. Jeff! freaking hilarious. Okay. Jeff, Jeff. ignore him and walk to the kid. Okay. Alright, now you can go. Listen, you little pump! Get back my pro wallet, or else Randy putting the wallet in his pocket and pull out his own knife. Oh, and what will you do? Just as he finished his sentence, Jeff popped the kid in his nose. Boom! Headshot. <laughs> as 
and when he reached to the boy's face, Jeff grabbed the kid's wrist and broke it. Oh, jeez, this guy knows how to fight. Rennie s- screamed, and Jeff grabbed the knife from his hand. Troy and Keith rushed Jeff, but Jeff was too quick. He threw Rennie to the ground. Keith flashed it out at him, but Jeff dug and stabbed him in the arm. Ooh, ow. Keith dropped his knife and fell to the ground screaming. Troy rushed to him, but Jeff didn't even need a knife. He just punched Troy straight in the stomach, and Troy went down. As he fell, he puked all over. Liu couldn't do nothing but look at amazement at Jeff. Your turn. All right. <clears throat> Jeff, how? Jeff, how? Yeah. Jeff, how are you? That's all he said. They saw that the bus coming and knew they be blamed for the whole thing. So they started running as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw the bus driver rushing over to Randy and the other. As Jeff and Lewis made it to the school, they didn't t- dare tell what happened. All they did was sit and listen. Lewis just thought that his brother beating up a few kids, but Jeff knew it was more. It was something scary. As he got that feeling, he felt how powerful it was. The urge to just hurt someone. He didn't like how it sounded, but he couldn't help helping. Ha- feeling happy, he felt that strange feeling go away and stay away from the entire day of school. Even as he walked home due to the whole day near the bus stop, and now how he probably wouldn't be talking, the- talking, taking the bus anymore. He felt happy when he got home. His parent asked him how his day was, and he said, "In somewhat, I'm in this voice. I'm in this voice. Oh yeah, I could." It was a wonderful day. Next morning, he heard a knock at his front door. He walked down to find two police officers at the door and his mother leaking back and with an angry right. look. She's like, she's like, what did you just do, son? <laughs> All right, my turn. Jeff, these officers tell me you attacked three kids. That isn't regular fight. No, that it wasn't regular fighting and uh, that they were stabbed. Stabbed, son. Jeff Gaze fell to the floor. Jeff, showing his mother that it was true. Alright. Alright. You say that one line right there. Son, calm down your better. No, the one above. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, it was me! I was the only who be up the key! Luch, I told me that, but you gotta stop me, the goblin. No! <laughs> one of his mom, they were the ones. Mom, they were ones who pulled the knife on me and Lou. All right, my turn. Son, <laughs> son, then when the cops, we found the three kids, two stabbed, one having a bruise on the stomach. We have one. Nice boys. And you have land the scene. Now what does that tell us? Jack knew it was no use. He could say him and Lou have. But then they were, then there was no proof. It was not them who attacked first. They couldn't say that they were fleeing because truth was be told they weren't. So Jeff couldn't defend himself from the Son, call your brother. Call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do it. Since it was him who beat up all the kids. Alright, your turn. Sir. It was me. I was the only one who beat up the kid. Lewis tried to hold me back, but he couldn't stop me. The cop looked at his partner and they both nod. Well, kid, looks like uh, you're in juvie. Wait, see, Louis, they all left the same holding a knife. The officer pulled the guns and locked them up on Lewis. It again. was me! I beat up those little kid, you little scork. Had the mark to prove it. He lifted up his Sleeve to reveal cucks and bruises as he was in the struggle. Son, just put the knife down, said officer. Said officer. We would have up the knife and dropped it to the ground, and he put his hands up and walked over to the cops. No, Louis, it was me. I did it. Jeff had tear running down his face. <laughs> huh? Huh? Poor bro. Trying to take the blame for what I did. Well, take me away. No, oh, wait. <laughs> the police let him move out to the patrol car. Oh, well. Okay. Wait. 
Lou telling them it was me. Oh, shit. All right. It was like... <clears throat> Lou tell them it was me. Tell them I was the only one who beat up those kids. Jeff might have put her aunt on the shoulder. Jeff, please. You don't have to lie. We know it's Lou you can stop. Jeff watched hopelessly as we can't wait. Jeff, please. You don't have to laugh. We know it's new. You can't stop. Jeff watched helplessly as the car as the cop car speeds off with Lou inside. A few minutes later, Jeff stabbed pulled into the driveway, seeing Jeff's face and knowing something was wrong. Son? Son, what is it? Jeff couldn't answer. His vocal cords were strained from crying instead. Jeff? Jeff's mother watched his father and son to bring the bad news. To him as Jeff at the drive at the driveway. After an hour or so, Jeff walks back into the house. Seeing that his parents were both shocked, sad and disappointed, he couldn't look at them. He couldn't see how they thought of Lou when it was all his fault. He just went to sleep, trying to get the whole thing out of his mind. Two days went by. With no word from Lou at JTC, no friends to hang out with, nothing but sadness and guilt. That is until Saturday, when Jeff woke up by his mother with the happiest sunshiny face. Jeff needs to be! She, she sat as she opened the curtains and left the blood into his room. Like blood into his room. <clears throat> what? What's today? asked Jeff as the stare awake. Why, it's Millie's birthday. He was now fully awake. Mom, you're joking, right? You don't expect me to go some kid party after there was a long pause? Yes, we, uh, we both know what happened. I didn't this party to be the thing that binds the past days. Now get dressed. Jeff's mother walked out of the room and downstairs to get ready herself. He fought himself, he fought himself to get up. He picked out a random shirt and pair of jeans and walked downstairs. He saw his mother and father all dressed up. His mother in the dress and his father in the suit. He thought why they would ever wear such fancy clothes to a kid's party. Is that all you got your hair? said Jeff's mom. Better than wearing too much, she said his mother pushed down the feeling to yell at him and hide it with a smile. No, Jeff, we may be overdressed, but this is how you go to if you want to make an impression. Oh, wait. <clears throat> now, Jeff, we may be overdressed, but it's not, but it, this is how you go to go if you want to make an impression, said his father. Jeff grunted and went back onto his room. I don't have any fancy clothes, he yelled downstairs. Just pick something out, called his mother. He looked around in his closet for what he would call fancy. He found a pair of black dress pants he had for special occasions and an undershirt. He couldn't find a shirt to go with it though. He looked around and found only striped and patterned shirts, none of which go with the dressed pants. Finally, he had a white hoodie and put it on. You were wearing that? Said, they said both. His mother looked out at a watch. Oh no! Time to change! Let's go! She said as she heard it. Jeff and his father out the door. They crossed the street over to Bar Barbara and Millie's house. They knocked on the door, and it appeared that Barbara she looked like his parents way overdressed. As they walked inside, all the Jeff could do was see were adults, no kids. The kids are out in the yard. Jeff, how about you go meet some of them, said Barbara. Jeff walked outside to a yard of old kids, full of kids. They were running around in weird cow like costumes, shooting each other with plastic guns. They might as well be standing in a Toys R Us. Suddenly, a kid came up and handed him a toy gun and hat. Hey, wanna play? 
Come on, hey, you wanna play? He said. Ah, oh, no kid, yeah. I'm way too old for this stuff. The kid like him, and with that weird. Puppy dog feet. <laughs> Please, said the kid. Bully. Alright, okay, your turn. Fine, CJ. He put them on the head and started to prank shoot at the kid. At first, he thought it was totally ridiculous, but then started to actually have fun. It might have not been super cool, but it was the first time he had to do something that looked, that took his mind off too. So he played with the kid for a while until he heard a noise. A, re a weird rolling noise. Then it hit him. Randy, Joy, and Key all... I'll jump over the fence on their skateboard. Jeff dropped the fake gun and rip off the hat. Randy look at Jeff with a burning hatred. Hello, Jeff, is it? He said. We have some unfinished business. Jeff saw his bruised nose. I think. I think we're even. No, oh, wait, it's your turn. I beat the crap of you and you get my brother sent to JDC. Renan got an angry look in his eyes. Oh no, I don't go for even. I go for winning. You may have kicked our... <clears throat> booties. <laughs> now you read it, actually. You this may stuff. have kicked your ass that one day, but not today. As he, as he said that Randy rushed at Jeff, they both fell to the ground. Randy punched Jeff in the nose. And Jeff grabbed him by the ears and head, but... Uh, out. Jeff pushed Randy off of them and both rose to their feet. Jet kids were screaming and parents were running out of the house. Why did they run out of the house? I don't okay, know. Whatever. What's, the, how, what's going on? Nice parents. Troy and Keith both pouring guns out of their pockets. Oh, great. No, that's unfair. I would say that's unfair. <clears throat> no one can rest our guns are will fly. They said Randy pulled out a knife and on Jeff and stabbed him in the shoulder. Jeff screamed and fell to his knees. Randy started kicking him in the face. After three kids, kicked Jeff grabbed his foot and twitched it, causing Randy to fall on the ground. Jeff stood and walked towards the back door. Troy grabbed him. He needs some help. He picks Jeff up by the back of the collar and throws him through the patio door. Ow! As Jeff tries to stand up, he tries to stand, he is kicked out of the ground and Randy immediately started kicking Jeff. So he starts to call out blood. Come on, Jeff, find me. He picks Jeff up and throws him into the kitchen. Randy sees a bottle of vodka on the counter, smashes the glass over Jeff's head. What is he trying to kill him or something? Jeez, is this boy psychotic or something? Boy, he throws Jeff into the living room. Okay, now this kid wants to kill him. Come on, Jeff, look at me. Jeff glances up, his face. Filled with blood. I was the one who got your brother sent to JDC, and now you're gonna sit here and let him run in there for a whole year. You should be ashamed. Jeff started to get up. Oh, finally, you started to fight. You stand and fight. Jeff is down on his feet, blood and vodka on his face. Once he, once again, he gets a strange feeling, the one in which he hasn't felt for a while. Finally, he's up, says Randy as he runs to Jeff. And that's when it happens. Something inside Jeff snaps. His psyche, his psyche is destroyed. All rational thinking is gone. All he could do now is kill. He grabs Randy and power drives him to the ground. He gets on top of him and punches him straight in the heart. The punch causes Randy to start stuff. Yeah, no. That would, that would, man, I don't know. As Randy gasps for breath, Jam, Jeff hammers down on him, punch after punch, blowing crashes from Randy's body. Now this guy wants to kill him until he takes one final breath and dies. Oh my god. <clears throat> Alright. Everyone is looking at Jeff now. The parents, the crying kid, even Tori and Kid and Kid all do their easy break from their gaze and point from their guns at Jeff. Jeff see the guns train on him and runs for the stair as he runs short and kid lit I'll fire on him. He shot missing Jeff run out of the air. He, he hears Tori and Keith out of behind as they lit their final round. The bullet Jeff dug into the bathroom. He grabbed the towel rack and ripped it off the wall. Twelve and him ran. Reason. Knife ready. Four. I got me this.
Troy swings his knife at Jeff, who, br who backs away and brings Nate the towel rack on Troy's face. Ow! Troy gets, goes down hard, and now it's all the fun keeps. He's more, he is more agile than Troy, though. And ducks when Jeff swings the towel rack. He drops the knife and grabs Jeff by the neck. He pushes him into the wall. A thing of bleach fell on down on top of them from the sh top shelf. It burns both of them, and they won't start the screen. Jeff wiped his eyes as best as he could. He pulled the back the towel rack and swung it straight to Keith's head as he as he lay there, bleeding to death. He left out on a smile. Your turn. <clears throat> All right. What's so funny? Asked Jeff. Keith pulled out a lighter and switched it on. What's funny? What's funny? He said. Uh, All right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. What's funny? He says. Is that? Is that you're covered in bleach and alcohol? Jeff. Jeff's eyes wanted to keep throwing the ladder at him. As soon as the flame made contact with him, the flames ignited the alcohol and the alcohol in the vodka. Well, all the alcohol burned him. The bleach, the bleach bleached his skin. Jeff let out a terrible screech as he caught on fire. He tried to roll out of the fire, but it was no use. The alcohol had made him a walking inferno. He ran out and fell downstairs. Everybody started screaming as they saw Jeff, now a man on fire, dropped to the ground, nearly dead. The last thing Jeff saw was his mother. The other guy was trying to extinguish the flame. That's when he passed out. <clears throat> no, you would most likely die from that. When Jeff woke, he had a cast wrapped around his face. He couldn't see anything, but he felt the cast on his shoulder and stitches all around his body. He tried to stand up, but he realized that there was some tube in his arm. And when he tried to get it up, it fell out, and the nurse rushed in. I don't think you can get a man to see it. She said that <laughs> <laughs> she put him back in his bed. And when he started the tube, Jeff sat there with no vision, no idea what his surroundings were. Finally, after hours, he heard his mother. <laughs> yeah, you okay? She asked. Jeff couldn't answer though. His face was covered and he was unable to speak. Oh, honey, I have great news. After all the witnesses told the police that Rick confessed to trying to attack you, they decided to let Lou go. This made Jeff almost bolt up, stopping halfway. Remembering the tube come out of his arm, he'll be out. Yeah, I'll come out and you'll do it. You two will be able to be together again. Jeff's mother, Jeff's mother hugs Jeff and says her goodbyes. The next couple of weeks there were those where Jeff was visited by his family. Then came the day where the bandages were to be removed. His family were all there to see he, that what he would look like. As the doctor unwrapped the bandages in Jeff's face, everyone was at the edge of their seats. They went in until the last man in his hole in the cover of his face was almost removed. Let's hope for the let's hope for the best, said the doctor. He quickly pulls the cloth, letting the rest fall from Jeff's face. Jeff's mother scream Jeff's mother scream at the side of his face. We were Jeff there downstairs all struck to his face. Your turn. What? What was happening to my face? Jeff said. He rushed out of a bed and ran to the bathroom. He looked in the mirror and saw the cause of distress. 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 His face. Distress. It is horrible. His lips were burned to a deep shade of red. His face were turned to a pure white color. And his hair sang from brown to black. He slowly put his hand to his face. It had a sort of literary feel to now. He looked back at his family, then back at the mirror. Jeff, said Luke, it's not that bad. Not that bad, said Jeff. It's perfect. His family were equally surprised. Jeff started laughing uncontrollably. His parents know that his eye and hand were touching. <laughs> uh, Jeff, are you okay? Okay, I never felt more happy. Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! Look at me! This face goes perfectly with me! He couldn't stop laughing! He strode his face, feeling 
looking at in the mirror what caused this. Well, you may recall that this Jeff was finding random something in his mind, in Sin City. Now he was left like a crazy killing machine that his parents didn't know. Doctor, <laughs> said Jeff's mother. He's my son. Alright, you know the head. Oh yes, this behavior is typical of the poor patients that have taken very large amount of pain killers. This behavior doesn't change in the next few weeks. Bring him back here, and we'll get him a psychological test. Oh, thank you. Yes, mother went over to Jess. Yes, we need time to go. Jeff flew away from the mirror. His face is formed a crazy smile. Hey, mommy! <laughs> this mother took him by the shutter and took him to get his clothes! This is what came in, said Elaine at the desk. Jeff's mom looked down and see the black dress pants and white hoodie in his sir somewhere. Now they were clean of blood and now stitched together. Jeff's mom led to his room. Led him to his room and Jeff and made him put on the clothes on. Then they left, not knowing that this was their final day of life. Later that night, Jeff's mother woke to a sound coming to the bedroom. Bathroom. Sorry. It sounded as if someone was crying. She slowly walked over to see what it was. When she looked into the bathroom, she saw a horrendous, horrendous, horrendous sight. Jeff had taken a knife and carved a smile with Jason. Ugh. All right. Jeff? What are you doing? Asked his mother. Jeff looked over to his mother. I could've keep sm I could have keep smiling, mommy. If you're sat there a while now, I could smile forever. Jeff muttered and noticed his eye. Ring in Jeff. Back. Right. Jeff. In your eye. His eyes were seemingly never closing. I couldn't see my face. I got tired and my eyes started to close. I burned out the eyelids so I can forever see myself my new face. Jeff mother slowly started to back away seeing that her son was going insane. What's wrong, mommy? Aren't I beautiful? Alright. Yes, son, she said. Yes, you are. This is me. Oh, it's daddy. So we can see your ugly face. I mean, beautiful face. <laughs> She ran into the room, shook Jeff's dad, and was like, Honey, get the gun. There's a, there's a freaking zombie in the room. She, sat, she stopped as she saw Jeff's doorway holding a knife. Her right. turn. His mother, Louise, woke up and started. No! <laughs> 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 I'm just getting too scared, good. Look at uh, fucking Jeff. What the you fuck? Hide. Jeff is literally scaring the heck out of me. Look at that image. What the fuck? I know. Mommy, you lied. That's where it is. Mommy, you lied. That's the last thing they hear as Jeff rushed in with a knife. I'm gutting both of them. He's gonna kill them. Yeah, he did kill them. Oh, His shit. brother Lou woke up, started by some noise, but he didn't hear anything else. So he just shut, it, shut his eyes and tried to go back to sleep. As he was on the border of slumber, he got the strangest feeling that someone was watching him. As the boy said before, he looked up. Before Jeff's hand covered his mouth, he slowly raised the knife and plunged into Lou. Lou thrashed here and trying to escape Jeff's grip. Shh, just say, just go to sleep. Just go to sleep, Jeff. Da, da, da. Jeff the killer is right behind you guys. <laughs> Get one. Yes, that was such a great story. Man, that was really long. I never. Oh man, that was a really good creepy pasta story about Jeff the Killer. Man, oh wow, that was. That was long. Man. Was abso absolutely amazing. What do you think, guys? Do you guys enjoy the story? Yeah. I enjoyed it. <laughs> so funny. All right, now on to the Sims creepy mansion creepy pasta. More creepypasta. I'm not sure if I can go more and more. Alright. We're All right. Right. the next creepypasta. That's the Slim Creepy Mansion. So, sit enjoy. Another long story, huh? 
The Sims Creepy Mansion. <coughs> when I was younger, I loved video games. I would play for hours on end. It refused to socialize with others or go outside. Out of all my games, The Sims was my favorite. I would play it to death. I remember getting the original game when it came out in 2000. When I turned 13, I found out that my mother gave away my copy of the game. And being too young to get a job, I couldn't afford to buy another copy. And she refused to give me money to buy any more video games. It pissed me off. But I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do much about it. About a year ago, I felt like seeing it. I could find another copy of it to play just for the non sung <laughs> Nostalgia. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. I was just messing around. Nostalgia. I come in to a few flea market and found nothing. I was about to give up the last one and just go home, but want to check out at one last place. I found a copy of the Slim Double Duist for sale and asked the person how much he wanted for it. He has made an offer of $12. I examined the disc and uttered the one tiny scratch on the bottom. The disc seems to be tiny. Bigger condition as I look over the game and read the advertisement on the jewelry because the game came in. The seller, the seller lowered his pride to $10 and said, in hasting, insisting that I looked like I was really wanted it. While out his station, I reached into my pocket and handed the man $10 and left. After I got home to the flea market, I immediately went to my computer and installed it. I had not played since since I had my Windows 98 back in when I was considerably young. I went through the vaguely familiar installation progress, which required me to put in the serial code. After a few minutes, the game was stopped and ready to be played. I recall that the old Lulex was basically the Sims in the first two expansion packs combined. I fired up the game, and after watching the familiar intro, I was ready to play. Upon loading up the neighborhood, I saw an arrow pointing to a house. As it turned out, it was a tutorial how to play the game, because it was years since playing a tutorial at the guy named Slim named Bob Newbie, like you're a newbie, <laughs> <laughs> getting him the chair, having him interact with his surrounding, and get him in a job. Once I completed the tutorial, I looked to see if there was any other family, as it turned out, there was the God family living next door to the newbies. I decided that I would try to make a family. Ah, you guys are newbie family. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually <laughs> funny. Cracks me up. <laughs> when I looked at the family creation screen, I saw some families that are pre-made. One of them stuck, stuck out. Uh, this family was kind of on the Johnson family. It had eight different sims in it, consisting of five adults and three kids. What seemed a bit strange was the fact that I had a hundred thousand dollars or hundred k, where every other family is listed and only had two k, twenty or twenty. Sorry, twenty k. That's that's how usually when you start a family, that's the amount of money you get when you start out with. Yeah, a hundred thousand dollars. That's twenty thousand dollars. Oh yeah. That's the amount you start with. I also did not remember a Johnson family being in the original game. Although this was something you need to know with the Lex. Regardless, I picked some family and moved to, into a two sim lane. What a, how original. Switch set back, me back to about 50k. Wow, jeez. $50,000 for having a lot. I began to furnish the house, spending a lot of various and Only uh, using a 300 cot for a bed. Instead of more expensive dome beds for the extra man. Wait for well, you said three hundred dollar cock or cock or cock head. What the cock. fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? I'm like, is that even a word? I never heard that before. All right, okay. all right, all right. My first order of business was to check the name of each family member in their bios. Their bio was very unusual, to say the least. Least they talk about there is where a possession that they sub. Obsession. So, supposedly had nothing morbid or anything any but just something I think a normal person would be into. I then checked to see if any of them were employees as it turned out the three men of the family had a job as a judge, a president, and an astronaut. 
all three had a job performance of excellent as two women on the house where they were an uh, employee and all three children have an A plus in school. It seems that the man made plenty Gee, of money while two women family. were here for the girl. Boy, I played the Jonathan. I played the Jonathan family about five minutes before I quit. I see my game and quit the game. Quit the day. The G's a very successful family, a judge, a president, an astronaut, and all the kids get really good grades in school, and the two girls are just unemployed and take care of the kids while the the husbands are out doing their jobs. The next day, I saw something very strange for the Johnson family. Their boss seemed to have changed from talking about their bizarre intention to being just downright creepy. One of the boss read, the boss read that a member of the family would take pictures and add them to be pale without eyes. Oh, what the face of other shock. <laughs> what? 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 What was that? The family would take pictures of people <laughs> and them to be pale without eyes. Oh, shit. That's fucked up, family. What are you trying to Photoshop and that's creepy? You're Another... creeping me out. Someone's gonna be behind me. Right? <laughs> Someone always scare me from behind. I hate Another that. right. Another right. Chilling story. It's behind disturbing images in the books. Well, I thought first the vibes were just flat out weird now. Suddenly, I took notice that a young boy's hunger needed was very low. Before I could get him food, he curled up and died. Then the Grim Reaper came to claim the Ooh. child. I had one of the Sims played, plead with him, only to get ignored. The young boy was taken away, leaving that urn at the spot he died. <clears throat> Alright, this was strange because I could have sworn I came in feed bed before I quit. I was tempted to quit while same, saving and trying again, but Rancelli decided to accept the boy death when I moved to a camera back upstairs. I noticed the chain. The boy bed just disappeared for no reason. Oh, shoot, man. Also, the dining room said have eight chairs around. However, one of the chairs disappeared as well. Oh, that's fucked up. Oh, what the Oh, yeah. That's shit. That's paranormal activity right there, man. Then a few moments later, the phone rang in the house. I had one of my sim answer it. It only had to get to the. It, on, it only to get the following message. Um, Your second. Uh, right. You want me to read it? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Hello, I am your soccer. I mean, your second advisor had just exploded before war. I think, I think, I think he be the, I think he's the stalker. The phone. Call. <laughs> the stalker. Okay, your turn. All right. I feel a bit unnervous about the phone call with the disturbing message. Regardless, I ignore it and continue playing. Then something very strange happened. Quite of nowhere, a business appeared with a baby. It cried immediately. Amidity, okay, but I did one of the girls take care of it. Only a few slim hours later, the baby turned into a boy named Help Me. This what boy the was exact same as the one died a short time earlier. I checked this bow, our curse, curiosity, cursity, it reads curiosity. Help me so much pain. All right, my turn. Why so short? Why so creepy? Was there some bootleg Sims game that had some sadistic more in person modified? Little by little, I began to realize that this was not, I was not. That I was not playing the Sims at all. I was playing out some weird horror movie. Wow. I'm, the Grudge. Now I <laughs> Now I knew something was happening. Yeah. First time a boy died from hunger. Out. And <laughs> now a boy didn't help me. Oh, shit. I'm... Clearly something was going on. Bye, bye. Um, very strange. I'm so scared. I realized that one of my sins had a near empty bladder motive. So I tried to wake him up, but he refused to. I sat completely puzzled as to why the sins would not get out of their beds. Then I noticed something happening to him as well. His hunger bar dropped rather quickly. Once I fully depleted, he died from hunger too. And I have two dead Sims in the house. Oh, I then look around and notice that in bed that uh, he died and and was gone at all of a sudden. Again, the large chair was removed from the dining table. Dining room table. Help me began to tease and scare the two girls that he eventually attacked one, the two children jumped into a cartoon smoke cloud. However, something happened that freaked me out. 
The little girl had lost the fight, but she's simple. Oh, simple to spare with help me clapping his hand. After the relationship, minion size appear. Appear another urn spawn. Spawn it in where I would have expected the younger to be at. He then proceeded to eliminate the the other girl in the same manner. Nothing was oh, serious. I have a demonic boy with creepy name and only four adult sim to work with. Oh, what is this? As the other slim dev, each of the girl bed disappeared at the die as well as one dining room. Oh, Additionally, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 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 you scared me when you made that noise. Alright. Alright, excuse me, everyone. Additionally, Additional. one of the bathrooms became unfairs. Alright. Hey, my turn. At this point, I decided to play another family. Since I couldn't take that it was happening anymore, I played Michael Bachelor in a house of six, seven lane, for, and for a while, everything was normal. I had one of the jobs came over and getting situated. I had Michael talk to him for a while, and ultimately he became friends with him. Suddenly, he said he had to go... He had to go because I forgot to prepare food. Oh well. I picked the slacker job for him because he needed some money. I warned John to get Michael a couple of cooking skill points. So I upgraded so I could upgrade to a stove. During the time the phone rang, I answered and received the following mission. You have the chosen. They will come. They will come soon. Oh shoot, maybe the parish will come to them. <laughs> Oh, the, the purge, 24 hours with the Leo thing. <laughs> the 12 hours. Oh, yeah. There you Michael go. was chosen for what? Suddenly, a bunch of neighbors came over all at once. Oh, jeez, this is the purge. Oh, shit! Oh, fuck! I'm just kidding. Shit, that's fucking scary. <laughs> oh, this sounds like the this first purge. Like, like, don't talk, don't talk. Wow, <laughs> guys, this is actually is so scary when you start reading so many scary horror stories. Oh, uh, it, it just gives you chills now, man. There you go. All right, all right, including all right, suddenly a bunch of neighbors came over at once, including the solo child and the neighbor. Help me, <laughs> I did not prepare for a house party, so I quickly tried to prepare food for my neighbor. However, however, all that happened was a few of my neighbor talked to each other while I helped me scare my another. The neighbor ran off. Off of my lot, which was strange because I never remember Slim doing that. At any rate, the meal was served, and two Slim were lucky enough to sit down. The other had to stand to eat. Then I began to know something really wrong. He, <laughs> he helped me to help me took the dishes. Oh, what the freak! Help me is over there. Oh, great! So I'm like baby from the from the um from the cities. Help me, help me took the dishes over to the sink and broke it. Oh, jeez, he's a bad boy. He needs to stake him. And then he didn't throw a chance in that toilet. Jeez, clogging it up. When he tried to watch TV, it broke. Jeez, this guy is unlucky. My neighbors started to leave one by one. I thought it was Michael and Helmy left. I got Helmy's face up in my cue bar. I knew the cursor over it and said, Be terrified. Don't let me! Oh man, that's fuck up. I, I never remember seeing that as a possible command. Alright, I tried to click off it, but it was no use. Help me be got behind Michael and scared him. Instead of either laughing or throwing a fit, Michael screamed. And then I know it's something horrible. <laughs> Michael skin is pale Why not? Oh, my God, oh that's hilarious. Alright. Okay, you're good. At this point, help me left the house, and now Michael is white as now. White as no? I mean, he's a white American? <laughs> Just kidding. White American, his attire, fun and social, motivated, were per med and he's an American idiot. His man, man, mod, bird, bar, show for red, bar, even worse. I have worked shortly, so I thought coffee maker and have him drink a few cups to keep him awake. Michael then unclogged the toilet and went to work. I came and then take a dump and then went to work. I came back home with traditional walk. Come home, you buy home. Ninety dollars today. That's actually a lot of money. But now something was really getting spookily weird. On um, Michael face, his eyes, his eyes were missing from the socket <laughs> from the blood on his eye. Okay, I was officially freaked out and decided to see what was going on in the Johnson's mansion. I can't play. 
going to a firm work. And then suddenly Michael came over. I asked my son to greet him. She screamed and horn at him. And I saw another thing that disturbed me. Michael's face appeared and the told to say said he killed. Suddenly the scream was black. I heard screaming from the woman. It's a monocle laughter from Michael. Oh what the freak? What is this random activity he gets possessed? Oh no man. It could be some very The conjuring. <laughs> And then heard the music from the sun dying. Both men and both men were working at this time. And the other woman was to sleep in the bed. Another chair from the dining room vanished. Hmm. That's interesting. Turn. <clears throat> okay. What happened next is that I saw Michael and helped me hug. They helped me invite Michael inside. Michael went upstairs to use the bathroom while me began to destroy my object, my one Slim was asleep when Michael came in, got in bed with her. I don't know what's going on. Oh, really? They got sick. Yeah, because I was pretty sure you had to be friend to share beds. That's nice. That's actually true. Okay, you're my friend. You can share beds. <laughs> he then moved oh, close again. Then screen cut back, back black with the same sadness. Laugh. <laughs> laugh. Yeah, yeah. Laugh and the woman screaming. I have another slam dog. When I looked downstairs, only two Joe were dining room table. Only one dial better remain and let the object vanish. Next, something weird happened. Michael talked to help me and a message box came. Message box reading, Come my child, we have a lot of work ahead of us in your mama. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, Michael left the lot. We soon made the Sutara the newbie, the new family, and got families to make it a cut new up. We uh, helped me find with two men. They got home from work only to find more herbs in the house. I moved them outside so they turned into grave zones. For the next few days, everything was normal. Three ghosts appeared and they scared us in a few times. One of them actually made my son wet himself. Oh, he pissed his pants. Then I saw a behavior I never recall seen before. My sons began to laugh as they got insane. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I try. I tried to keep the two slim mod up, but it was no use. I end up getting the emotion from president to vice president and astronaut to commando the next day. You get the demoted from yeah, president that's to vice interesting. president. No way. The night the ghost haunted my slam again. This time, however, however, they attempted to drive one of the slim completely insane. Another ghost slapped the other one. Ooh, we can Yeah, slap that ass, motherfucker. I have to oh, right. him and go to sleep that night. I could have sworn I heard them getting scared from the knock of nightmare. One of the slam woke up when it's downstairs to get a snack. We seem perfectly harmless. However, as he ate the chip, he threw up and dropped to the ground. The Grand Reaper claimed yet another slam. Not only one chair remained. At this point, the only slam left decided to help me went up to work. We seem his name is Valerie is normal. What the phone rings again? I was reluctant to, but I had my son answer it. It said the following. Alright. I started at the message. <laughs> Alright. I started at the message. Now they're scared. This game was self aware. That's all. I want to buy it! Slim. I remember. Said you shouldn't have bought it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh. You shouldn't have bought this game. Damn, what is this game? Realistic? Um, well, hopefully this is real life. <laughs> Just kidding. You say, you say you should have bought this game. No, oh, that's really interesting. I remember from my child at all. The game was trying to communicate with me. Oh, man. It actually communicated. That's actually nice. Then, without warning, my slim head appeared in this quail bar with a toilet to tip himself. I clean, I clicked to cancel the command. Despite having a red X to it, it was no use. I watched in a horror as my slim slowly made his way to the balcony of the house. He tied a rope around his neck. Oh shit, commuted. You know, his head and onto the rail. He then jumped over and hung himself. My left slim had commuted suicide. Thank you, you commuted suicide by hanging yourself. Why? For, why he did that? I don't know, you wouldn't have Did he do that or was Surely that? after. Did he do that Surely after. What? <laughs> 
I was like, Joy sure, yeah, dude. <laughs> but I, I'm just telling you, did he do that in a game or did he do it himself? I'm like, that. He did it in a game. I'm like, oh, he, if he do that, he would die also in real life, I bet. Shortly after getting a message telling me that my son died, the phone rang yet again. This time, help me answer the phone. This time, I have to control him. Everything that I clicked on, on the soul, gave me the soul tip. There were no inter available interactions message. This was about. This was. This was. This is why it was said to help me. Your work is done. You, you say it. Your work is done here. Your work is done here. Now you know what must be done. Okay, I'm like it. Help me hang, hung up. Then suddenly his head exploded. Oh, what the freak? What? Help me. Oh, fuck. Dude. It's that exploded, his body went out until it fired, until I hold the house caught on fire. Oh my god. I never remember walls being flammable. Help me, help me hung up. Then suddenly, his head exploded and his body went out. Oh, what the freak? <laughs> oh, shit. In a pillar of fire, to my horror, the house caught on fire. I never remember the walls being flammable. Only objects. House gradually came, came engulfed in the blazes it asked without any notification help me disappear help me disappear from the fam my family. I watched the fire engulf the entire lot. I am a pool. Oh my god. Mm, leaving nothing but a barren black wasteland that fled in its wake. I ate a lot of it without being asked if you wanted to save the game or not, and I'm actually saved. Oh man, that's scary. Back of the Neighborhood screen. I know that a lot have been replaced with blood, red, a fighting, pentagram, and a now black rock plot of land. I tried to move another family to the lot to get a better look at it, but when I attempted to buy the lot, message pop up you can't buy this lock. When I clicked OK, my computer froze around the horizon shortly after my game crashed. I wasn't really sure that what to do anymore. My hands were shaking and I was sweating. I stared wide. I left the screen in horror for a few minutes. I shook my head, snapped out of it. I pressed all the button. I pressed the button to the tower to start the computer again. The computer turned on. The screen was black. The only thing that start looks with the underscore blinking. Operating system not found. Oh man. Oh my god. Oh wait, so it did crash the entire computer. Okay. That means he's playing on his computer. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. I was so scared, confused, and sad at the same time. To think that I want to play the Slim again. Oh, you mean the Slim? You mean the... <laughs> Only to experience my computer being completely destroyed. I could not even remove the CD while taking apart the tower. I unplugged the computer, removed my obstacle drive, and what's all the racket noise you're making, Super? Two days later, I heard the doorbell ring. When I answered, this little boy looked down. I ripped. When I looked down, I realized it was none other than help me. Oh, what the freak? Okay. What? What are the odds? Wait, what? Wait, what? When I, okay. On the fence that I had destroyed. Okay. Um, alright, the time, however, it was blood. This time, however, the eye, his eyes were blood red, and he couldn't, he looked very unhappy with me. I asked him if I could help him. He simply say in Simlish, very angry in his tone. He also threw a fit like the Sim would have. In this conversation, in this conversation, well, it had a picture of Z, I first, then pictures in the bubble were changed to snow, show, fire. Followed by the CD, the red X for it, then a dollar sign, then another person, then a dollar sign with a red X for it, and finally, I could hear with the red X for it. I could only vaguely just translate the voice. Funny. I'm not pleased with you. You destroyed the Sims on the life of the fire. You could have sold it to a few bikes with another person, but no, I got a broken computer. I was frightened really now. I thought destroying the CD would happen in this entire mess. Sally, all there was to make the horror that I saw turning into a twisted retality. I heard myself a ring. I left in my bedroom, so I ran to my room to answer me why or help me about it. So inside my house, I heard the sick, the 
sync running the toilet flushing and TV turn on when I answer my phone. I heard this this style voice. Make your final prey. Your time is up, brother. Haha. <laughs> Before I can the caller turned up. Are you kidding? Sorry. I went back in yeah, I'm okay. I went back into the living room and found a horrifying sight. My TV looks my TV looks just someone threw a huge rock at it. My kitchen was closed with the pipe from the pipes. The sink that being broken. And my toilet or phone it was clogged. Oh wait, he took the huge stuff at it and clogged the toilet. My refrigerator was broken as well. Even scarier. I noticed all the chairs in the dining room were missing but one. Oh what's up, He's in the game for real, is he released? He said he's trapped. Game. Yeah. He's, he's trapped. It fell as it was the very game I'm destroyed. Alright. Well, I ran away from my house. I looked down the street at the large house of my land. I heard screaming from inside and racing. Sure enough, help me me on my land owners. I saw my landlord eating a bag of chips. Suddenly he threw up and died on the spot. I got it and saw all this furniture bench. Then my landlord for me. I certainly heard the following mess. Hurry up, you will be done forever. By the time the comment hung out, the house burst into flames. I started to escape to the, from the burning house. But managed to escape. I started to escape from the burning house. But managed to escape. Severely burned. I then heard how he said what a chimp said. Child said the says when he got out of school before leaving the cellar of fire. Now, excuse me. Not completely, not completely traumatized. Like, I don't know want to explain what happened to me. No one's going to believe you. I looked out of the large farmland and landlord. I got seen a bird pentagram on the burning yard. Turn after I passed out and was taken to the hospital. Recovered from my burns. Okay, after all the evening that took place between Biden and Slim Double, do it's off that vendor after flea market to lay in the hospital, I came to a struck. Realization the seemingly incident game that I appreciate had a message for me. did not want me to embrace my child by having me experience something that made me watch even some of the scariest horror movie like nothing before. I will never look at the slim game the way anymore. Right, the that's end. That's a very great game. So it's basically a story about he's buying a new He game. bought a double the lux, yeah. but it turns out it was like a Edited bootleg creepy pasta. Yes. Yeah, or that. So just, yeah. There was a created family that was in on there before. It, it was normal. The get the family was really successful. The three husbands had a job in astronaut president and um what was it um judge and um. The kids were doing well in school. They all had straight A's, A plus. Yeah. All the Good wife for was him. Good for him. And all the wives were at home taking care of the kids. What was and the, then, what was the scariest part you have read? <laughs> <laughs> I got so scared. I like. There's like I don't know. It's a eight chair and then one chair missing. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> all right, time for the last creepy pass up. Oh yeah. So the yeah, strangest. you guys enjoyed this the slim creepy mansion story. Well, to the next um creepy pasta. All right, which is called the strangest security tape I have ever seen. Okay, guys. And so sit back and enjoy. Okay. The strangest security tape. I will read this first. I have ever seen. Okay. I work at a gas station in Rural, Pennsylvania. It's a boring job, but it's pretty easy. It pays all right. If he's we go, this new guy started. I call him Jeremy. Ooh, Jeremy. Ooh, I love that name. <laughs> Jeremy from Paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeremy is weird. He's pretty fine. Yeah, all right. Jeremy is weird. <laughs> he's about 25 or 26, and he already speaks. But he's, all, but he's got the creepiest laugh I have ever heard. I'm not sure I have noticed this. But it's never a problem. A bit of a problem. There's not much we can do about it. Customers never complained about him. He's always done his job fairly well. I mean, it's all a few weeks ago, anyway. That's one of the things that started going missing. Employees that own any business that sells consumer goods, and there's only one person working at the at time at the gas station. It's a pretty small place. About two weeks ago, my boss started to notice that we're short of more motor oils. 
Now, first, there was a few containers at the time. Then, the entire shelves have boxes thrown back around. Pretty soon, the entire shipments of grain would be gone the next day after we got them. And it would be fast to share and ship. My boss uh, has checked him security tapes from every single night he worked, but he could never catch him in the act. Jeremy would lock him in the closet, and then tomorrow we'll be gone the next day. Your turn. Okay. My boss. My boss usually take me tape home with him to try and catch Jeremy stealing, but his daughter had a softball game last night, so he asked me to watch the tape for him. He offered to pay me overtime under the table, so obviously I took that offer. There are three cameras, so he gave me that different tape to check. I figured it would be a long night, but I'm trying to save up for a vacation, so I really need it for money. I took the tape home, popped them in, you know, VCR, and sat back and relaxed with popcorn tonight. <laughs> Alright, two days ago, last time he worked, Jeremy started at 4 p.m. Everything seemed pretty normal at first. He counted out of his drawers, switched on with the girl, switched on with the girl who worked before him, and waited for a customer. The first person who came in was Mrs. Temple, Mrs. Templeton. The time stamp on the video read four or three. The regular, the regular customer. She picked up a stir of cigarettes and a newspaper. He paid him the twenty. Nothing usual there. The next customer was some old cool guy named Ron. He drives a motorcycle. He usually comes in there every few days. He filled up his tank, got a bag of, bag of beef jerky, paid with his credit card, and then left. The next time was a, the next was some guy with a cowboy hat. I never seen him before, but we got plenty of strangers passing through. Just like any gas station, he got a point where I was so much more diesel, paid with a hundred dollar bill. But on this way, I sat back inside. The only thing that is more boring than this job is watching someone else do it. <clears throat> okay. My boss, My boss offer was enough to keep me watching through. Left the tape on. Everything seemed pretty normal. I suspect I have a feeling that if Jeremy was stealing modern Oreo, he knew he was suspicious of him by now. I didn't spend to be dumb enough to let us catch him on camera. Things stay boring and routine, and routine until about five o'clock. Okay. <clears throat> At bottom three, Mrs. Templeton came back in. She must have forgotten something. But she didn't. She bought the same pack of cigarettes as before in the same newspaper. She paid with another twenty. Hmm, that's odd. I thought, but then again, she's a little absent minded. I thought Jeremy we should have told her she already got her sir, got her smokes. But the but might get to roll some of the same thing twice. Well we guess she even got her for a friend or something. That's when Ryan came in again. Here, Bob, I'm not going to take a gas. Okay. <clears throat> no big deal. More, no, I wasn't on it. Alright. Before there's more time again, I later checked the outdoor camera because I thought he may have another car he wanted to fill up. And the same pack of big jerky. He paid the credit card again. Your turn now. Alright. I just lost my pack. No big deal. No big deal. I figured this was just a work. Consequently, consequences. Yeah, we yeah. Miss Temperton. <laughs> Miss Temperton is forgetting, and Ron probably own more than one Hurley. That when the guy and the cowboy, hey, boy, had come back in. I feel a child run down my spine. Don't you get diesel? Don't get diesel. I find myself risking me to my empty living room. But he did. He got $40 worth of diesel for you and paid with another $100 bill. Every move he made was incidental to his first visit right down to the very way he scratches his nose before he walked out. Either this guy is rich or not like a truck and just moving to town or something really bizarre was happening. I kept a watching on him. Every customer for the next hour. You turn it off. I've done this before. Every single one. Alright. <clears throat> Every customer for the next hour it was the same before. Every single one. I was seriously freaked out. And then at 6.03, Mrs. Templeton walked back in. She, 
Excuse me. <laughs> she bought another cigarette and new again. And paid with another 20 again. I thought I was going to lose it. I only watched for an hour and a half an hour. Before I started fast forwarding to the rest. It was all the same. Every customer would come in at the exact same time, at the exact same hour apart. Do you get the theme right here? <clears throat> Maybe. Now that it's I'm like, right. yeah, it's like in a time loop. Every hour, the same person comes in, and uses, does, does the same thing. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Now that I know that you're thinking that the, that sneaky motherfucker Jimmy has messed with the tape, he has run a loop of his first hour of business over, and now if this wasn't the case. This with the windows and a crash versus your ear that can not recover now. Just watch the sunlight fade as it ran out. Jeremy routine didn't route in, didn't cut loop over. He swept, mob it, restock, and did all his duty as exactly how you would expect. But the same customer keep coming in. Oh, that's kind of creepy. I was panicking at this point. Something was seriously wrong with this final scene. I had no explanation for it. I said that when he walked up and walked out of his car, he hadn't stolen anything, but I kept watching just to make sure. I fast forward one last time at midnight. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't love this product. Alright, exactly two or three now out of nowhere. Jimmy face up part of the camera. I don't mean he moved his head into view. I mean that, that one second store that was an empty. The, the, the next second his face was all cold, all I could see. He wasn't licking at the camera, he was licking at me. I was sure of it. I screamed and flumbled for the remote. By the time I grabbed it, he was gone. Just as soon as he had left, one frame he was third. The next he wasn't. My head was shaking like crazy. But I popped up another tape. The other indoor camera shows the back here. But the cash was not over. You see how he got to put in his face. Yeah. Yeah. I ran like that. I skipped Don't ahead, tore over. I'm, but there's nothing I would have been me. able to stop and see as sure. Something on his tape. But um, he wasn't sure there. I didn't see the store all after he left. It's like wasn't really there. He didn't know the security code and all alarm were triggered that night after he locked up. What I did see, however, was at twelve three in the morning the memorial vanished off the shelf. All of it. Same as Jerry's face, Jeremy's face. One second it was there and the next it wasn't. I turned on the tape off and went to bed. But I didn't get a wink of my of sleep. My mind is exhausted right now, but mine is racing. But my mind is racing. That thing was undoubtedly um, the creepiest, most disturbing thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm working a few hours. My boss asked me to bring the tape back and let me know what I found, but really, what the hell am I going to say? Jeremy worked the night shift tonight, thoroughly after me, and the plan was my boss to come just before I leave and confront him. When I was supposed to be the one who called him, tell me. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I suppose I have to show my boss the tape, but I don't know what to watch. Watch them with him. I never want to see something like that again. I can't get the image. Jimmy just smiling direct, directly into the camera out of my work. It was the creepiest look I ever seen on another human being face. Anyway, I'm gonna try and get some uh, some last minute sleep before I go and, and deal with this. I'll let you guys know what happens. Update, 2.49 p.m. Update from my phone, apology in advance for error. My boss just finished watching the last tape. I don't know what you as that expect. Do you really can't prepare something for something like that? He scared shit is. I am still too. And Jeremy is due to come in out for We got a little over an hour to get an hour shit together. But neither one of us know what to say to him. Is he just fuck up guys who let you steal motor oil and scare the shit out of people? Or he's something else? I don't know if this is crazy, but does everyone think he could have anything to do with some time loop? My boss said he never noticed anything like in the other tape. But the way he popped up and the way he made me think he knew I would be watching is like he wants to see what he could do. Like he's showing off or something. The way he smiled at the camera was like a little kid showing you a Santa castle that just built or something. I don't know. I probably just some crazy. I just felt some the part that I'm going to talk to my boss some more. We have to calm ourselves down and figure out how to handle this. I'll do it again today. I have really had bad feeling about how this is going to play out. Alright, I'll do I'll do all these until 10 o 10 58 p.m. Update four thirty three p.m. No sign of Jeremy trying to call him, but his phone has been has been disconnected. I'm calling the police. Update five thirty three p.m. No sign of Jeremy trying to call him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update six thirty three p.m. No sign of Jeremy trying to call him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update seven thirty three p.m. No sign of Jeremy trying to call him. But it's been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 8.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried to calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. 
Okay. For the fifth time, we're calling the police. Okay, now your turn. Update, 10 for day p.m. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, shit. I just got home and saw my papers. Update, these are make sure you left, so now I need them. Here, what I can tell you. I went to work, Jimmy. He never showed up. My boss and decided to call the police. As you well aware, when I pick up the phone to kill so called someone out, I shit you that what I thought happened. Apparently, I backed a lot for exactly five hours because when I look at the clock, it was 9.33. I thought I got stuck in Jimmy time blue. Then I snap out. Right to that point, I black out and that made sure. But then when things got really weird. You want to read again? All right. My boss was right next to me when I black out. I was really preparing myself for the help when I came to the phone and the help. But it was sad. Not even a dial tone. My boss was still right there, but he was moving. He was standing up for frozen. I looked up the clock again and it was moving. The second hand was stuck on the 12. It was 9.33 exactly. The call in the register com computer screen wasn't moving either. My phone was frozen. There was even a customer at the register waiting for Miles to get him secure. I've been putting that bench fifth pack of the date. Oh, that's some fuck up shit. I got the freak out of there, didn't lock up, didn't turn on the light, turn the lights out, and sorry guys, I didn't grab the security tapes that left on the internet. Believe me, that was a lot of saying on the line. The gas stations on the way and the cars were all parked along it, except they weren't parked at, they were just frozen. The people inside were just standing still as wax statues. I got in my car and prayed they would start. Thankfully it did. About half, half a mile. Half, halfway home, time started over again. The static from the radio turned to noon like it's supposed to be, and from that I would be listening to the host talk in between song. No one knows the time freeze or whatever. I was the only one. Well, I'm sure Jimmy knows as well. I still have no clue whatever he is or he's doing. I'm holding my room, calling the police again in the morning. I don't know if I ever get to them before, or if I did, whatever they took me seriously. I'm scared for my life at this point. I update tomorrow if I can. Final update, 10.33 p.m. Or a.m. I finally fell asleep the last four, night around 4. I have no idea how I did it. I guess exhaustion finally got the best of me. This morning I woke up to my phone ringing. It's my, it was my boss. He's been calling me since 6. I woke up you. He woke me up when the time turned back on the last night. He immediately, immediately called They They came by to see what was wrong and told me everything. Told him everything. The police around here were all the all time guys. They were more concerned about the missing one world and everything. The boss, but my boss figured that he would take it. He would take it as long as he had their attention. They decided to go look for Jeremy. We keep all of our employees' applications in the file, and since Jeremy was just he was easy to find. They checked the address and signed over his house. You're not going to believe what they found. The address Jeremy listed on his application was an empty. Empty lot, or at least now it is. There used to be a house there, but now it burned down in 1993. Being a small town, almost everyone remembered that fire. A family of four used to live that way back then. A rumor has it that they have a strangled, strangled, who they, who they never talk about. But I can say for if that's true. But what I can say that's true after insurance investigation, the fire was ruined for. Arizona, the entire house was soaked in oil and torch oil. Molliver caught tail or oh, caught, 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 caught tail the entire family was sleeping when it happened. None of them survived. They never caught the guy who did it. Rumor has it when they tried to contact the instrigation son, no one could find him. Anyway, my boss called and told me this, and I freaked out. Then he asked me to come over to the gas station. What are you, crazy? I said, and then he assured me that I mean, assured me the cops were there. Then he dropped the bomb. The FBI was in town. And they were going to talk to me one way or another. So I might as well come in. It was 10:15, and I wanted to go back to bed, but I figured I wouldn't be able to sleep much more anyway. So I went down there. Four men in suit greeted me and told me to see. We only have everything in two or three times. They got this detail down. I told them about Jeremy the security thing last night. Where everything finally after I finished one, the agent say, "Oh, oh, Chris, oh, Chris, we got another one on our hand." Then. Made me assign a bunch of papers saying I wouldn't tell anyone about what happened, so I can't say much more. I might be breaking the law by posting this. So now I'm home. So now I'm home. Alright, alright. All right. All right. I'm not sure what to do with myself. Any smart is when I told them the story and they're going to the for the rest of the time. Alright. Anyway, I go, I go, I got to go. I got some errand to run today, and then I had to go and work to pick up some tape. My boss now thinks this guy knew Jeremy is a, he's a complete creep, and still anymore, I have to watch the security if I can catch him doing. I have been doing things, but my boss has paid me overtime over the table, and I'm trying to save up vacation so I could use my. It's a pretty example. The oil always gone missing right after the ship. I figured I just wanted to tape and catch him, and, and they will be done that. Oh, finally done. 
So, what I think of this story was pretty interesting, not really, but this is about security guy or stoning something or something like that. It's not really that interesting. I enjoyed the other two stories. Story. But anyway, guys, this is all it. Um, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys haven't, if you guys haven't subscribed yet or you already subscribed, but make sure to subscribe to and subscribe and to become the awesome today. And you guys really enjoyed this. As always, like or comment or share with people. And adios. We we'll see you guys later. And see ya. Yeah. Bye. Later. Stay awesome, guys. See ya. Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching this. I will see you again later. Adios.